Okay, so I've been waiting uh, till I had uh, as much uh, time to gather information and digest uh, what happened yesterday before making a video. Of course, there were these two shootings, the first one in El Paso and the second one in Dayton yesterday. Uh, it's unclear at this point whether they're connected. Um, frankly, I'm, I'm leaning against uh, that possibility right now. It just doesn't make sense that you would have two guys, you know, in, in Dayton and Dallas coordinating like that. I would think that they would have um, done it uh, perhaps at the same time. It just, I think it might be a, a coincidence or perhaps uh, the man in Dayton might have been finally inspired by what had just happened in El Paso and emboldened uh, into acting himself. But of course, uh, there was that manifesto that uh, appeared on 8chan yesterday that uh, at first uh, appeared, uh, you know, people were saying it was a hoax, uh, it was an 8chan prank, it wasn't actually uh, written by the shooter, but uh, after looking at it, I think it was written by the shooter, uh, because uh, the guy in it, it, it appeared on 8chan uh, before, apparently, uh, the uh, the first 911 calls were made, and uh, the guy talked about how he was using a Wasser 10, and the guy in the video very clearly had a Wasser 10. Uh, either that, or it was a, you know, one of those um, really cheap sentry arms, uh, stamped AKs, which they didn't make very many of, because I think they had, um, I think they had problems with those guns. So it's probably a Wasser 10. There's a lot more of those out in the wild. It, you know, it had blonde furniture. So I'm going on the assumption for now that that um, manifesto was legitimate. And of course, in that manifesto, uh, the guy essentially he started out by saying that uh, the Christchurch shooter uh, did was kind of his kind of a guy. Um, he ag generally agreed with uh, what he wanted to achieve, and uh, he had similar goals. Now, of course, the Christchurch shooter uh, shot up uh, two mosques in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand, hoping to spark some kind of a uh, civil war in the West uh, between natives and migrants, and uh, hoped that people would wake up, you know, to sort of push Islam out of the West. And uh, this guy had a similar perspective, except not about Muslims, about uh, Mexicans. Well, actually, I think he said Hispanics. He used the term Hispanics and Mexicans, and of course, uh, for those of you who uh, don't really live in, a, uh, in the southern portion of the United States, uh, using the term Mexican is kind of uh, common because there are so many people in this part who are migrants who happen to be from Mexico. So sometimes it gets used interchangeably. Even if a guy happens to be from Honduras, he might get called a Mexican. And so it, it was a rather scary manifesto because it was so calm. And I guess crazy people kind of are calm uh, when they're you know, ready to kill folks, but the guy didn't sound deranged. He sounded very calculated and cold. Uh, the way he described it was that the Hispanics, he didn't consider to be um, his enemy um, in the abstract, but simply as a matter of uh, circumstance, that in this case, uh, they happened to be a threat uh, to uh, the whites in America or something. And of course, what he was referring to was, uh, you know, the theory of the Great Replacement, which sometimes gets derided as some sort of a white supremacist conspiracy theory. Uh, but to be honest, the whole idea of, uh, you know, Hispanics re replacing the white people uh, is pretty mainstream among the left. In fact, I learned about it from a uh, left-wing teacher I had in high school. In fact, the furthest left teacher I had in high school taught us about it. So I don't think it's a right-wing theory. In fact, I hear the left talk about it much more. And of course, the, the theory is that um, uh, America is, and the West more broadly, is developing what's called an inverted population pyramid. And a population pyramid is basically, the, it's, the way you want to think about it is um, a strong population uh, should have, you know, age. If you if you graph out the population based on age, it should look like a pyramid. Meaning, you have a lot of people down at the bottom, uh, where the populate where their age is young. You want a high population of young people and a relatively um, smaller population of older people. So it should you should always have whatever age group you're in. There should always be less uh, people who are in the next age group. And because we're having we have declining birth rates in the West and in the U.S., uh, we are developing an inverted population pyramid to where, in some you know groups, there's it's getting to the point to where there are relatively more old people than there are uh, younger people uh, to pay for their expenses. And of course, when you have a welfare state with stuff like Medicare and Social Security, you need a lot of young people paying into um, that that system in order to fund uh, the expenses. Uh, that have been promised to the older generation. And the result, of course, is going to be the eventual uh, bankrupt, uh, bankruptcy of uh, Social Security and Medicare. Uh, it, we will get to a point to where uh, they can't pay for it um, 
without you know just printing money from the Federal Reserve. Uh, we're getting pretty close to that point, but uh, an idea to save that was essentially replacing uh, the uh, the large popul you know the the missing population of young white people by bringing in uh, folks from the third world who uh, would have higher birth rates and of course are non-white people, at least generally speaking. There's obviously a lot of uh, white people in South and Central America. It's just that the ones who tend to migrate are the poor Amerindian or Mestizo type people. And so you have a lot of uh, Oh, white nationalists who are very concerned about this, who don't like the idea uh, that uh, you know white people are being replaced uh, with Hispanics, and so this guy essentially saw himself as uh, striking the first blow uh, against the Hispanics on behalf of the whites. And again, the guy seemed pretty crazy. I don't really understand the logic. I don't see how him, you know, killing a a few uh, Mexicans, and I believe he actually killed three Mexican citizens in this attack. Um, he held 18 total so far, I believe, uh, and uh, I don't see how him taking out a, a few Mexicans really helps his cause, but I guess like the Christchurch shooter, he's just hoping to cause more unrest. He wants to create more chaos because, uh, of course, that's kind of uh, what the point of a terror attack is. Now, of course, uh, to me, as someone who, you know, outside of doing these videos doesn't pay a whole lot of attention, I don't – you know, my life is not consumed – by our current political situation. In fact, I try not to follow mainstream politics at all because I think it's so toxic. But I think that um, in our current generations, you know, meaning people like my age who are, you know, maybe age 18 to 30, you have a lot. And this guy actually was born. Um, he's pretty close in age to me. I think we were only born a couple months apart. There's a lot of people who really lack purpose. There's a lot of people who are very highly atomized, and of course that happens uh, when you have the lower when you have the lower birth rates. You have smaller families, and you have people more spread out. Of course, in our society, it's very it's customary for for kids to go off to college and then live in you know in an entirely different city, a thousand miles apart from everyone they've ever known, uh, and work you know in some uh, uh, in some uh, investment bank somewhere. And of course, that leads to people who are atomized, who don't feel a whole lot of purpose. They don't have really goals in their life. They're just sort of working. Uh, to get their uh, their next paycheck, and that leaves a void in people's hearts, and that's a void that has to be filled by something. Uh, and in this ca man's case, uh, his, that void was killed by, uh, was filled by uh, you know the purpose of trying to save the white race from uh, what he perceived to be uh, eventual extinction. And of course, people will will use this. Uh, this situation, all these situations to sort of uh, push their own political pet project like, uh, you know, you have lots of Republicans saying, see, this is why we need stricter laws on, you know, condemning people to uh, mental institutions and we need to open back up the sanitariums and, and lock people away instead of turning them out onto the streets to live on their own devices. And of course, the Democrats are saying, well, this is why we have to take away all the guns. You know, the, the Republicans want you know, crazy control, and the Democrats want gun control, and really that's not going to fix the core of the problem. Uh, the core of the problem here is that you have people uh, who uh, have no purpose in life, and they find that purpose on the internet through anything. And in fact, I think this guy, all these these young kids uh, who get into, because there, there have been a couple of these white nationalist shooters now, they remind me a lot of jihadis. I think it's really the same of the same path. You have these guys who are atomized, who don't have any purpose in life, and they go on the internet, they find something that they can stand up for, that they can be a part of, something bigger than uh, their very boring and meaningless life that they live. Because if you think about it, a normal person who has goals and a purpose and something that they that they value, you know, someone who has a family would never go out and become a shooter because you know as soon as you pull that trigger, your life is over. You're ruined. You can't achieve anything else. You'll lose everything you have. The only people who do that are people who have nothing to begin with. You really have to be an empty person uh, to want to give your life uh, for this, for for these political goals, because that has to be everything you live for. Uh, you know, most people. You know, it's like the, it's like what they say in war. Uh, guys in war don't die for the cause. You know, the soldiers don't care so much about the cause; they care about trying to protect the guy next to them. People don't typically fight and give their lives for abstract concepts. They give their lives for much more fundamental, for much more um, small things. Things that are not uh, about the big world. Because I think for most people, I think that it would be very tough uh, for uh, guys, you know, in Vietnam uh, to have uh, fought the way that they did. Uh, you know, only simply believing and trying to, uh, you know, keep communism out of South Vietnam. 
I think that very few people are that ideological. Now, uh, in response to uh, these two shootings, uh, if the second one is indeed uh, proven to have something to do with the first or was also done by some kind of like white identitarian guy, uh, we may – uh, start to see a reaction from the left. Now, the left has been very slow, I think, to react uh, to violence from the right. There have been some attempts. Of course, there was um, uh, that guy, that one terrorist uh, who was a Bernie supporter, worked for Bernie, and he went and shot up the congressional baseball, um, the, the Republican congressional baseball team. I think he ended up getting killed on the scene and didn't didn't live to stand trial, um, but he, he wasn't able to actually kill anyone. He just wounded a bunch of people, but he did shoot up the place pretty good. And then there have been a couple of uh, Antifa guys uh, out in Oregon, um, not in Portland itself, but around there, I believe, who have uh, tried to uh, blow up some of some stuff to do with ice and of course you know the antifa rallies if you go there uh, they're going to be pretty violent to you but you haven't seen anything uh, widespread or flashy you haven't seen any um, any you know too much uh, in the way of uh, antifa you know shooting up a place but i've been seeing some uh, some some articles in the left-wing blogosphere trying to desensitize uh, people on the left to the idea of owning guns and the fact that they that they are going to have to stand up uh, against uh, the right and fight back to them, uh, you know, with force if necessary. So I think that you, in the future, we will eventually start seeing terror attacks like this from the left uh, that will start springing up. Because really, what what we're witnessing is, uh, as many other people have said in the last 24 hours, is uh, sort of the the thawing of uh, the Cold Civil War. I think that uh, for a couple of years now, we've been moving into a time when political violence is going to become more and more regular. Uh, and uh, more and more common. And I think that is, uh, to uh, uh, in large part, the violent part will come from people just, you know, on both sides, left and right, not really having much of a purpose in their life outside of politics. But the, uh, the main cause of our uh, uh, political dysfunction is, of course, uh, the centralization of power. Uh, we're getting to the point to where, you know, people on the left and the right, uh, one of them will control Washington in the end, and one of them will be able to have their way, and then, you know, the other half of the country is just going to have to sit there and take it. That's not a sustainable path. Uh, we're getting to the point to where uh, our government is becoming untenable uh, because there is real no uh, diversity across the, the country. It's becoming – federalism is considered now uh, uh, to be pretty uh, – pretty dirty of an idea. Uh, people don't really care about that. They don't want other people to live differently from them. They want to impose their will on all 320 million Americans. And so as long as that uh, instinct exists uh, in U.S. politics, uh, well, then things are going to continue uh, to uh, to escalate and things will get more violent because there is no peaceful way of resolving your differences uh, if you can't uh, respect that other people are going to be different. If Democrats cannot uh, you know, tolerate, for example, uh, that you're going to have a lot of people in red states uh, who want to own guns, well, then it's pretty obvious that that, that leads you down to a, a very violent path. Uh, you know, if the ATF decided to confiscate all the guns one day, we would have, you know, a million Ruby Ridge situations uh, to where folks would just say no, and they're not going to give up their guns, and they're going to end up in a standoff with the ATF, and the ATF is going to have to slaughter, quite literally, I think, millions of people. Or at least at least a million, and of course, if they have to do that, uh, then <laughs> uh, the uh, the confiscation program just wouldn't be tenable. Uh, I think that uh, we're at a point to where neither side really can get what they want. Uh, they they're pushing too far. Uh, you know, the the left is will never have their socialist utopia. It's just a uh, it's an economic uh, uh, it's an economic certainty. Uh, and, and impossibility. And by the same token, the right uh, will never be able to deport all of the illegal immigrants. I think that the, there's uh, way too many at this point. Uh, you might be able to stop the flow of illegal immigrants, uh, but you're never going to get rid of all of the uh, illegals that are here currently. And so in closing, things are going to get worse in the United States before they get better. Hopefully, what I've been hoping is that you will have a peaceful dissolution of the United States, and you end up with much smaller states, hopefully smaller than even the 50 states. I would, Ideally, I think there should be a thousand uh, uh, successor states to the current uh, you know, United States of America uh, in which people could uh, you know, govern themselves differently uh, from you know, any of the 999 other states, and uh, people could end up living in peace 
uh, because uh, there would be no reason for folks in California uh, to worry about what folks in Texas are doing or for folks in Texas to worry about what folks in New York or Massachusetts or Wyoming or Nebraska are doing. That ultimately is our only path to peace. Uh, it's the same thing with... Uh, uh, with uh, what happened with old Yugoslavia. Now, unfortunately, Yugoslavia came apart in a very violent manner. Uh, I don't want that for the United States. I would hope that uh, the United States came apart more like the Soviet Union, but hopefully into a few more pieces, considering the Soviet Union only broke up into a few countries. There's no reason why people on the left and right uh, have to hate each other. Uh, they just, you know, people are different, and that's okay. And uh, we shouldn't have to resort to violence uh, to uh, uh, account for those differences. Uh, we should just be able to acknowledge them and not impose them on each other. We shouldn't try and uh, make other folks uh, into people they are not. So with that said, if you gained anything of value from today's video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And if you do subscribe, uh, please do click the bell uh, because I do upload every day and I'd hate to have you miss one. So I'll see you folks back here tomorrow.